Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Measuring Antennas with the FPC 1500. In this presentation, we'll show you how to make basic antenna measurements using the Vector Network Analyzer mode of a Rodian Schwartz FPC 1500 Spectrum Analyzer. This presentation covers the essential information needed to make basic antenna measurements with the FPC, but please see the presentation Understanding VNA's Antenna Measurements if you're interested in learning more about this topic. There are actually two types of antenna measurements. One type of measurement is a radiation measurement, which describes how well the antenna radiates a signal. This includes the antenna's gain and directivity, beam width, efficiency, etc. However, in this presentation, we'll be looking at the other type, which is antenna impedance measurements. The impedance of an antenna determines how much of the input, or transmit power, is absorbed or radiated by the antenna and how much is returned to the transmitter. This is done by injecting a signal into an antenna and then measuring the magnitude and phase of the signal reflected or returned from the antenna. This will change, often substantially, as a function of frequency. There are several different methods or tools that can be used for measuring antenna impedance, but the preferred method is using a vector network analyzer to perform a reflection or S11 measurement, and this is the method used by the FPC 1500. The Rodian Schwartz FPC 1500 Spectrum Analyzer contains both an integrated tracking generator and an internal Visoir bridge. The tracking generator is an RF signal source whose frequency can follow or track the measurement sweep. This signal is used both as the input to the antenna as well as the reference for the measurement results. The integrated Visoir bridge enables the FPC 1500 to make reflection measurements on antennas by separating the forward and reverse power. Both scalar or magnitude measurements and vector or phase measurements can be made with the FPC. And measurement results can also be displayed in a variety of formats. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll go step by step through how to perform various antenna measurements. There are six basic steps in making antenna impedance measurements. Connecting the antenna, configuring the source or tracking generator, configuring the measurement frequency range, performing one port calibration, selecting the display format, and viewing and or analyzing the results. Let's start with connecting the antenna. In most cases, a feed line is used to connect a transmitter to an antenna, or more precisely, to the antenna feed point. Because antennas generally work best when they are mounted in high or unobstructed locations, such as on a tower, the feed point may be very difficult to access, and therefore antenna measurements are often made at the transmitter end of the feed line. There are two methods for connecting a feed line to the FPC 1500. The first is simply connecting the feed line directly to the Gen Out port. The second is using a short, high quality DUT or device under test cable. This is often done for ease of attachment or to avoid strain on the instrument connector. Measurement accuracy is unaffected by the stud cable as long as calibration takes this cable into account. We'll talk about this in detail in just a few minutes. Next we need to configure the FPC's tracking generator and this is done by pressing the measure hard key and then source. For antenna measurements we want tracking generator mode in which the output of the generator is a CW signal whose frequency is coupled to the measurement frequency. That is, the source output frequency sweeps at the same rate as the measurement. The output power of the generator is also configurable in units of dBm using the level key, with the maximum output power level being 0 dBm. One important thing to keep in mind is that the antenna under test will radiate the signal sourced by the tracking generator. The radiated amount, or level, will depend on the antenna, and will change with the generator frequency. This test signal could therefore potentially create over-the-air interference to other systems using frequencies within the generator sweep range. We also need to define the frequency range over which the antenna will be tested, and this should cover the intended operating frequencies but may also be expanded to detect any other resonant frequencies. To define the frequency range, press the Frequency Hard key 
and enter the start and stop frequencies. The span key can also be used to enter these as center and span instead. The number of measurement or trace points over this span can be specified by pressing the sweep hard key and then adjusting the number of points. A greater number of points will provide greater detail, particularly over wide frequency ranges. Antenna measurements on the FPC-1500 are made in Vector Network Analyzer mode. To enter this mode, press the Mode key on the front of the FPC and then choose Vector Network Analyzer. Next, press the Measure Hard key and choose Reflection S11. This is the mode used for making all types of antenna impedance measurements. A one-port calibration should be performed before any reflection measurement, and this process involves sequentially attaching an open, a short, and a match or load. These standards can be in the form of discrete standards, or can be combined into a calibration T. In addition to these manually attached standards, electronic calibration units also exist. These switch the standards in and out automatically and are controlled by the FPC. Regardless of which type of standards are used, the process is started by pressing the Measure Hard key, Calibrate, One Port Selective Span, and then selecting the calibration kit. Next, simply follow the prompts for connecting the manual standards or the automatic calibration unit. If the antenna or feed line will be directly connected to the FPC, then the calibration standards or calibration unit should also be connected directly to the port on the FPC. If, on the other hand, a DUT cable is used between the FPC and the antenna or feed line, then the calibration standards are connected to the end of the DUT cable. Attaching the calibration standards to the end of the DUT cable removes the effect of this cable from the measurement. Measurements run automatically when the antenna under test is attached. Here's an example of an antenna reflection measurement. In this case, we're looking at SWR as a function of frequency between 420 MHz and 500 MHz. Over the next few slides, we'll go through some examples of analyzing or measuring the properties of an antenna using a measurement trace. We'll be using markers to get precise numeric values from the graphs, and these are enabled using the marker hard key. Up to six markers can be placed on a trace, and these can either be absolute markers or delta markers, which show the difference between marker values. You can toggle between types by using marker type. Another marker hard key is used to automatically place markers on the peak or minimum values of the displayed trace. Let's start by using markers to find the resonant frequency and bandwidth of this antenna. An antenna can be considered resonant at the frequency with the lowest SWR, which in this case is at approximately 474 MHz. We'll define our antenna bandwidth as the range over which SWR is less than 2. Using markers, we can determine the lower bandwidth limit of 471 MHz and an upper bandwidth limit of 479 MHz, meaning that our antenna has a bandwidth of approximately 8 MHz. Note that in this case, the bandwidth is not perfectly centered around the resonant frequency. Antenna bandwidth is also commonly defined in terms of return loss, typically the range over which return loss is greater than 10 dB. Using the same antenna and limits as before, but with the display format set to return loss, we again set a lower marker and an upper marker and looking at the difference between these two points, we again get an antenna bandwidth of approximately 8 MHz. The last display format we'll look at is the Smith chart. Unlike SWR and return loss, the Smith chart displays complex impedances, that is both magnitude and phase. As with the other display formats, markers can be placed on the Smith chart, and these will provide the complex impedance at a given frequency. We don't have time to go into details about the Smith chart in this presentation, but note that the best impedance match, corresponding to the lowest SWR, or highest return loss, will be the point closest to the center of the Smith chart. Let's end with a brief summary. Vector Network Analyzer mode on the Rodian Schwartz FPC 1500 Spectrum Analyzer can be used to measure antenna characteristics 
by performing reflection or S11 measurements. These are made using the analyzer's internal tracking generator and Visoir bridge, meaning that no external devices or accessories are needed to make antenna measurements. However, one port calibration is needed before making measurements, and this requires either manually attached calibration standards or an automatic calibration unit. Also, keep in mind that a feed line and or duct cable are often connected between the FPC and the antenna under test. Measurement parameters and display modes are user adjustable, and the most common of these are standing wave ratio, return loss, and the Smith chart. Markers can be placed to obtain precise numeric measurements. And although this presentation has been focused on antenna measurements, the methods and settings used for measuring antennas can often also be applied to other one port devices. This concludes our presentation, Measuring Antennas with the FPC 1500. If you'd like more information about network or antenna measurements, or spectrum and network analyzers from Rodian Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.